Hello, good morning. We'll wait and see if we can see a few people joining us. We're just gonna wait for a few more people to get on. And since you are on, I'm gonna show you something very special. It's not really about our program today, but it sort of fits in with our program. It's not a furry mammal, but it does use a burrow. And so as more people are getting on, oh, looks like another person came on. Hello from Stella. Great, glad to have you join us, Stella. Um, we'll be waiting for a few more people, and so you get this special preview. And I was coming into the park, and I noticed that there was a gopher snake on the ground, just outside of the park, and it was a pretty big one. And so, of course, it would use a burrow and go in and to eat the things that lived in the burrow. Um, and then, a few days later, I walked by, and I had a very special treat. So I'll show you my special treat. This. Do you recognize what this is? So as the gopher was going out of its skin, I'll show you this one. It looks like there's two different gophers here. It was like you getting out of your socks. And so if you imagine a sock on my hand, and then I'm peeling it off, this being the head part, then this is the head. What's what came off of the head and it's inside out and this is what was underneath and here's the top side pretty cool and look at the tail the little skinny tail here so I know this isn't what we're talking about today but this is another one that would come and borrow a burrow and live within it and just one of the cool creatures so that you have something to look at we will let a few more people join us here in our webinar let's take a look we have a few more people. So we now have Jack, great, and I'm here. So I'm not quite sure. Oh, Grace, excellent. Thank you for joining us. All right. So people are just getting on right now. And thanks so much for being here. For those two of you that just came on, I was just saying about how as I came into the park, there had been a gopher snake. And then a few days later, there was this thing. So pretty cool something that lives in the room also. I know it takes a little bit for people to get into webinars. Um, so today for Junior Rangers, I'm curious if you have been doing Junior Rangers before. Is this your first time or not? So if you don't mind putting in Q&A, if this is your first time, and it looks like somebody else joined us. So that's, let's see, okay. And great, Grace, thank you so much. Okay, so if you've already been in Junior Rangers, then you may know that there's a whole process of Junior Rangers. There's all kinds of things that you can do and be part of. I think I'm gonna just turn this down a little bit so it's a little more interesting behind me. Let's see that. All right, so it looks like a few more people have joined us or have responded. Let's see. Um, it looks like, I need my glasses, sorry, I'm gonna put on some glasses so I can see because I just have eyes that need glasses. Okay, so, oh great, so Stella, you've, ran, you've come to several, great, and Isaac, you did it, oh great, excellent. And Grace, you've done it before, and also Jacob, excellent, thank you so much for answering. That helps me a lot. Okay, I'll take off these glasses for right now until we need them again. Um, so in Junior Rangers, we have in the past had a logbook, a Junior Ranger logbook um, that people signed into. And now that we're doing everything virtual for the start of the summer at least, what we're gonna do is we're going to have some pages that you can download and you can do the virtual um, Junior Ranger um, book. I'm realizing that, okay, and then, um, on the back is the pledge, which we'll do at the end today. And then we have a couple of stamps that if you stay through the whole program, we'll be sending you these out virtual also for this program. We also have a poll to see what your answers are at the very end. And we do have, in addition, um, in Spanish and English, so if you're learning Spanish or know it, um, you could do it in Spanish, and that's the Junior Ranger Adventure Guide. 
So that is a chance to do something um, where you're doing sort of self-guided junior rangers. So that's just a couple of things going on. Well, a couple more people join us. Let me just see how many we've got. Aha, we've got a few more. So Jack's here and let me see. Um, okay, Stella, Jack, Grace, I saw you folks, and Isaac and Jacob and Aya. Okay, excellent, your first time and James. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, we're expecting a few more families, but I think in fairness to everyone, I'm gonna get started with our main part of the program. So if you see Judy's face, she is one of our wonderful docents. She's been a teacher for years, and she is really instrumental here in the park, helping with a lot of programming and helping me with this program as well. So um, let's get started on some of the things in some of the boroughs. Now behind me is a creature that you sometimes see in your neighborhood. And so that's why I chose to be right here. But most of the time I'm gonna be showing you um, behind this so that you can see better what I'm holding up. So the first animal that I wanna show you is just an amazing animal. We don't get too many times to see it because they're living in a burrow, but I love this animal very much. Do you recognize it? It's got a little pointy tail, a little pointy face. Oh my gosh, look at these back legs. Yes, there are wires on it because it is taxidermed. Taxidermy is the ability of um, making an animal so it doesn't stink and rot, and they are freeze-dried animals. Um, we have a, somebody who's really good at that in our community, Mr. Gurney, and he's done a lot of freeze-drying for us of our animals. So here are the front feet of this amazing animal, and you can see it's the mouth. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna share a bunch about this animal as we go. Very fun, we're getting a few more people joining us. Let's see who else. Okay, um, sorry. All right. Okay, yes, you are right, it is a mole. All right, so um, very, very, very soft. You may have heard of mole skin to make it so that you don't get blisters. I wonder if they used the mole originally for mole skin. Now they use just synthetic stuff that's soft, kind of like the mole skin. Probably where it's got its name, mole skin. Okay, second animal that we're gonna talk about is this one. Pretty interesting, very different kind of feet, very different kind of face. And look at these little back feet and that little tail. Pretty similar tail, look, different back feet. Very soft fur, but it's a little bit different than the other kind of fur. Now the third animal, I do not have an animal to show you, but I do have a picture and that's this animal right here. You may recognize it. Another one that you find in holes. So do you have a guess of what this animal is? I guess I should have said, this was a gopher. We don't know the gopher. And then the question is, what is this one? Looks like somebody responded. Oh, too many in your yard, yeah, uh-huh. Um, you know, it is related to a ferret and it is called a weasel. So it's kind of interesting. So um, as we let a few more people get on, I'll go into a, a diversion of another relative of the weasel is, like I say, a ferret, a marmot, a skunk, kind of interesting. The weasels have a really kind of a nasty smell that they mark their territories with. It's called musk, and it's a lot like, it's really stinky. Not quite the same as a skunk, but pretty stinky. But they have to rub that on versus a skunk that sprays it out. So the other relative is right here, which is kind of fun, and that's this. These are the teeth of a young baby and an adult sea otter. So as we go through, we'll sort of look at these teeth again for just a minute. 
and see what they're like. And then when we get through to the weasel a little bit later, you'll see how similar um, some of their teeth are to the weasel. All right, so we, we showed you a few different animals that we're gonna be talking more about, and let's go into a few more details about them. When you look at your sheet, I'm hoping that you have your sheet with all the clues on it, and you look, let's start with those teeth, since I already started with teeth. Let's start with the teeth. So if you're looking at your sheet, and you look in the upper right-hand corner, Whose teeth are those? And then if you look second line down, there's some more teeth here. Whose teeth are those? And then you look in the bottom in the middle, whose teeth are those? So I'm gonna start with this bottom one and explain a little bit about it. So this animal right here, look at those teeth. They can grow 11 inches. Amazing, amazing amount. So what do they have to do? They have to constantly use them. Gosh, could you imagine being a gopher? Wouldn't you get dirt in your mouth? That would be awful. Well, actually, when you look really close, can you see how the, the mouth is closed? The lips are closed behind those teeth. So they can use those teeth even if they're underground and they can grab with those teeth in the dirt and even use them to dig their burrow with. Pretty incredible teeth. Very, very big front incisors. I'll give you another clue. They eat plants. And as a plant eater, you really need to take your tongue and feel the back teeth in your mouth. Can you feel those back teeth? So those are grinding teeth. And that's what the gopher has, is a lot of grinding teeth. Okay, now let's look closely here. A skinny, skinny, skinny little face, skinny, skinny little teeth area, skinny, long, 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 long mouth. And I'll give you a clue of what they eat. They eat 40,000 insects in a year. 40,000 insects. Are they your friends? I hope you say yes. Because they're really, really helping with a lot of the insect population. A lot of insects pupate, which means that they um, change and grow up into the flying insect underground. And so when the mole is underground, then it can eat those insects and the grubs. They call them grubs sometimes. Um, the young stage is the larvae, the young stages of those insects. So they do a lot of eating and a lot of chewing. So let's feel kind of the front of our teeth. And then into those little, what they call dog teeth, those little pointy ones. Okay, yeah. That's a lot like this one's teeth to be able to eat those. And then lastly, the weasel is a lot like that sea otter. Let's take a look at the weasel. Um, on your sheet of paper, if you have it, if you don't have it, I'm gonna show you a bigger one, but that top right hand, this is the weasel picture. Can you see? So, really sharp front teeth. And again, feel your dog teeth, those pointy ones. That's what all their teeth are like. Wow. So what is it eating? Well, if you like your other two animals, you won't be real happy with the answer. But you probably know the answer. It's eating the other two. All right. Is there anything in question and answer? Let me just check and see if I've missed anybody. Uh, okay. Yeah, excellent. Okay, I think we're doing well. Now, I'd like to go um, into the burrow next. So on your sheet of paper, you can see that there's a number of different burrow types, and there's a number of different from the top view versus from the side view on here. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the gopher. Sounds like a few of you already know about the gopher because you have them in your yard. So the gopher is constantly digging. It is um, like a construction worker. 
constantly working on tunnels, constantly working on digging. Um, actually, let's talk about how they dig. Um, looking at the gopher here. So I mentioned about those teeth and look at those front claws. Perfect for digging. So please join me and let's be the gopher. So stick out your teeth and your claws and then dig and stick the dirt under your chin and then bring it up to the surface and dump it out. Okay, and bring it up and dump it out so everybody can do that. Bring it up, dump it out. And that's how you make the burrow. So is there an opening to the outside? Yes. Now, in contrast, let's look at this one. Look at these feet. Incredible feet. Huge, giant mitts. Almost like a baseball mitt, but with nice claws to be able to dig with. And of course, their nose and all is too fine and gentle to help at all. So for these, they are constantly moving. Oh, what I didn't mention is they, their shoulders are kind of hunched up right against their front. So hunch up your shoulders and let's get our big paws out to dig like a mole. Everybody can dig like a mole, make your burrow. Now a mole does not want to be up at the surface. Unlike the gopher, if it's up on the surface, something might come down like a hawk or an owl or something that's a predator, maybe a fox or a bobcat, something like that might come and try to eat it. And the mole has very little defense. It doesn't really have anything to protect itself with, just these digging feet. And so it really needs to be careful not to ever get exposed to the air. And so it constantly makes tunnels, digging, digging, and it moves the dirt into another tunnel if it needs to. You can help me with moving the dirt into another tunnel. You need to, and it's digging and digging, and it pushes the dirt up to the surface and makes a mound, getting it out so it can keep on digging the tunnel. So you can join me with those. Okay, so now let's look at our tunnels, knowing what we do now. As you look at the tunnels, you might notice on the left top that there are these runways not at all opening to the surface right and this mound not opening to the surface right and then in contrast look at this one right here now it looks like it isn't open to the surface but if you look really really closely at that little circle that's a plug so let's go back to being the gopher okay so we were the gopher making tunnels and being this incredible construction worker now, let's say that you don't want to use that opening or you're afraid that one of those predators might get you. So let's take the dirt and stick it up into the hole and push and push and push. You can get more dirt against your here, push it up and really plug up the hole. So now can you imagine it plugged up? So this big opening now has dirt pushed into it and it's sealed off from the top. So take a look at this one. You see how it has that little plug? And that closes it off on the surface, right? Okay. So again, when you look at the mounds from the side version, can you see the difference? So we have the mound in the middle here and the mound over here. Which one is open to the surface and which one, or has a plug, either or, and which one never opened up to the surface? So let's take this one. Never open to the surface. If you want to answer in Q&A, let's see what you say. Yep, you're right. It is a mole. The mole never opening to the surface. Great, excellent. Um, so here is something, and is this correct, this picture here? What is wrong with this picture? I'll give you a minute to answer in question and answer. There's something very wrong with this picture. It's an interesting picture, but it wouldn't happen naturally. What's wrong with it? Let's look at Q and A. Just an answer. Okay. Silence. 
Grab my glasses again. Real quickly here. Yes, exactly, Stella, and others too. You're right. Um, and good, Isaac, it is the mole, and it came above the surface, and we know that moles never want to be on the surface because they get down. So really, really important difference. Um, so that's what's wrong with it. But if you look on the bottom left, that's correct, where the mole is hidden in its tunnel, right? Okay, so before we were talking about teeth, and I don't think that I really kind of finished up on teeth, and I apologize about that. So all those skinny little teeth, to eat all those insects, that was the mole, right? Long, thin head. And then here you can see the incisors with the really big front teeth. And those grinding teeth. So for the gopher, the back teeth, grinding, eating those plants. Yeah, all right. So let's go a little bit into the weasel. Um, so weasels, do they make their own hole? Or do they borrow a hole? As a top predator, a carnivore, they actually are borrowing holes. And so let me show you. Sometimes they just have their burrow be in some rocks, and so it's not really in the ground too much, it's just in the rocks. You can see this big pile of rocks but oftentimes they're using a burrow from the mole or the gopher. If the mole's burrow got broken, they could get in it, and the gopher is a really easy one to get in. Yeah. Uh, I think somebody just responded. Burrows or steals, absolutely, you're right. Yep, good grace, that's an excellent answer, yeah. All right, so um, weasels can do amazing things. They can jump six feet in the air. I mean, I'm not even six feet, even with my hat on, well, my hat on, I'm still not quite six feet tall. So they can jump really, really tall. And um, that's pretty amazing. And I have a, a picture of a weasel that's jumping. Isn't that funny? You can see it jumping up in the air. Now, it's really, really interesting how weasels move. I mean, we talked about the mole we talked about the gopher underground, but the weasel above ground, you can oftentimes, if you're in snow country, see the tracks of the weasel. And this is what they do. So these are the front tracks, the ones that are small, and these are the rear hind feet, the front feet, hind feet. So if you can look here, you'll notice the hind feet are back and the front feet are here, and that's about how long the body is. But now, it moves its body up and comes back down with its hind feet back and its front feet forward. So it's kind of like a slinky, dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun 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 dun, dun 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 dun. So you wanna try, try that with your hands. So you're going up and down and then the back feet come down and then your front feet forward and down, front feet forward and down. I would do that with my body, but I'm not nearly as flexible as all of you folks. However, I would like to see you do that with your body. So if you want to come find a little space around you and try doing that, you're going to do much better than I. So then you take your body and you arch it up and you put your front feet down. And now you arch it back again. You can put your back feet down and your front feet down. You arch again. Do that. You're going to look much better than me doing that. Okay. So that's how the weasel moves. And I thought it might be fun to compare that to how other animals move. In fact, let's think about ourselves. How do we move? So we are what they call, so a weasel is called a, a um, bounder because they bound, 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 bound. Um, we are called diagonal walkers. And so we walk with, if you move your right foot first at the same time as your left hand, and then your left hand and your, I mean your left foot and right hand, and right foot and left hand. So let's practice walking diagonally. So do, 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 do. Should feel pretty comfortable. Is that what you usually do when you walk? Try it again. And now in movies, you might see somebody who is 
like swaggering a little bit. Swaggering is like kind of showing off or being kind of like tough. That's how a bear moves. And people can also move like bears do. And that is called a pacer. So let's all try pacing. So for pacer, you move your left side together, and then you move your right side together, both arm and foot. And let's try that the other way. Does that feel normal or does that feel kind of funny? Now you're probably more flexible than I am, so you're probably doing it on the ground like this, I'd imagine, moving together or moving opposite. Yeah. Okay. So different kind of movement, they are bounders. All right. So we're getting towards the end of the scheduled program. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining. And I wanted to do a little poll. So let's see if we can pull up the poll. And okay, it's just letting me do Q&A. Uh, more. Let's see if I can get the poll up. Do, 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 do. Oh, how disappointing. I made a little poll for you, but I'm not seeing how to do it on here. Um, okay. All right, let's just do it in Q&A. So, which animal never ever shows itself on the surface. Do you want to write that in? Okay, excellent. Yep, I see Isaac did it and James did it and Jacob did it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good, oh yeah. And Mario did it and Grace. Yep, 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 excellent, good. Now, um, so I'm glad you were following along with me. Now this is kind of interesting. I found this plastic thing, but what's interesting about it is it has like little teeth almost look. So it's not quite accurate, but whose teeth were more like this? The animal would have had a little pointier, but you can see these teeth, little pointy ridges. So let's see if we've got an answer here. And all right. Okay, so let's look again at our teeth. The gopher having these front teeth. Oops, sorry. To get out of here so you can see. Gopher having these really sharp front teeth and those grinding back teeth eating plants, right? And the weasel being kind of like an otter, having, but even more like a, like a, a cat family almost because it has more of these really sharp teeth. These very sharp teeth here. And then, like many of you are saying, the mole. So take a look here. See all these little pointy, little pointy teeth. Very interesting. Eating insects, right? Okay. Now here is a subjective question that you can answer in this in the which animal do you think is best adapted for living underground? And that's your own opinion based on what we've been talking about. What do you think? Which animal do you think is best adapted? It can survive the best because of the way its body is structured to live underground. And let's see if you got a response here. Aha. Yeah, Jacob and Isaac, I agree with you. I think the mole. What I didn't really mention on the mole fur, I think I did it that said it was soft, but there's no direction to the mole fur. It goes the same forward and backward. Can you see that? Same forward and backward. Pretty amazing. So if they wanted to turn in their burrow, this is kind of a fun thing we could do. Everybody be a mole for a minute. Now when a mole wants to turn in his burrow, it puts one big pod down or hand, whatever you want to call it, and one up on the top of the burrow and it turns itself around in the burrow like that. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, now the other question I wanted to ask you is if you could be one of these animals, which animal would you prefer to be? Would you rather be the gopher? Incredible digger and builder. 
very present? Would you rather be the secretive mole under the ground? Excellent digger, trying not to come to the surface. Or would you rather be the long-tailed weasel? What I'm seeing is several of you are really wanting to be, if you had to be one of them, would much prefer to be the weasel. Is that because you live outside and you like to be outside? Or is it because it's the top predator and you wouldn't have to be so worried about getting eaten? I wonder which it is. So maybe you can write in why you chose the animal that you chose. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Nice, nice. I like your answers. Yay. I'm seeing. I like to dig in the dirt. So James is liking that. And then being the top predator and being safe sounds, sounds pretty good. Yeah, I agree, Jacob. Yeah. And yeah, one of my jobs was actually in a cave long ago. And every time I came out of the cave at night and I saw the stars or during the day and I saw the sun, I was just like, oh, I love being on the earth and being out in the open. So um, maybe I wasn't meant to be. Okay, I think there's another answer. Whose answer is that? Let me see. Okay. All right, I think what we'll do now is um, I will send you the Junior Ranger stamps. We have a Natural Bridges one and we have a programmatic one um, that I'll send you virtually. And we will um, do one last thing together, which is in, in becoming a Junior Ranger, you probably already know this for several of you that have done this, but that's the pledge. So please help me and put up your hand as a, ra a junior ranger. I'll say the sentence short and then you can say it after me because it's gonna be hard if you don't see it in front of you or don't know it, okay? So I, and I'll use my name, you can use your name. I, Martha, promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect. Okay, let's let you do it. I promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect. Okay, second part of it is I promise to be careful of what I do and how it affects others. And the last part is, I promise to learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. I promise to learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. Okay, so when I send this off to you, you will have that in your virtual logbook if you don't already have it. And so we'll send you this also um, in the mail. And one last thing, if you are growing up a garden, Please don't kill our friends. Remember that weasel needs to eat 1,500 gophers in a year, 1,500 gophers in a year. So gophers are our friends, and how we can live peacefully with them is we can have raised beds. So if you put down mesh on the ground, and then you put your dirt up, and then you have like wood around, and you make your garden in the top, you won't have any trouble with the gophers. Or what we did was we dug down. We had pathways where the gophers could run back and forth. And we dug down in the ground about three feet because they only go usually the top two feet, but three feet is safe. So if you dig down three feet in the ground and you line it with mesh and you put your dirt back in, then you can have your vegetables or other plants there and not have to worry about the gophers eating them. Remember, they need to eat a lot. 
And one last cool thing that I forgot to say about the gopher that's super cool is because they're eating so many plants and seeds and things like that, they need to have pockets. And so, like my jacket has some pockets, I was pulling my glasses out of it, but their pockets are like their cheeks. So if you puff it up with air, that's not actually what they're doing. Their pockets are on the outside. And so just like on our jackets, they can open them up and actually turn them inside out. And they even are fur lined. So pretty cool how they work and how they live. So I want to thank you again for joining us today, learning about our little creatures here that are under the ground, being real careful about them. And the other thing is, if you use poisons, what are those owls going to eat? What are the hawks going to eat? What are the bobcats going to eat? What are the foxes going to eat? They need these animals. They need them healthy and strong and um, unpoisoned. So please, please don't use poison really, really important for our environment. So I pledge to take care of the earth and to learn more about it. And I hope that you do too. And thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I look forward to seeing you in other Junior Ranger programs. So if you haven't heard the whole schedule and you'd like to sign up at Big Basin this Saturday, we're gonna learn about the FBIs, the very important decomposers. So thanks for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you in other programs in the future, and hopefully here in the park soon. We still have no parking um, in the park. They're talking about perhaps soon opening that up, um, and we'll put that on our answering machine. If you need to get a hold of us, I'll say the phone number here twice, and on the answering machine, you will hear the message. 831-423-5555. Extension 8. I'll say it again. 831 423 4609, extension 8. And then you can find out about what's happening on our beaches and uh, with parking and everything else. So here at Natural Bridges, we still have the 11 to 5 closure on the beach, but you're very welcome from 8 to 11 and from 5 until about 8 is when it starts to be the sunset. So you're welcome to come back to the beach at the end of the day. But I'll give you a secret. In the next few days, if you can come to Natural Bridges, park on the street, come down to the Natural Bridge side. It's a marine protected area. So we don't climb on the rocks and we don't poke anything and we don't move anything because, you know, being a junior ranger, we're careful about stuff. And we're looking really closely. You'll see so many wonderful shelled creatures and other animals that live in the rocky inner tidal. You'll see some tidal animals there. So that'll be about 9 to 11 the next few days. If you come down early, um, you'll have a really special treat on that natural beach side. So hope to maybe see you there. All right, take care. <laughs>